Hey folks, welcome back to Distant Signal and to a brief making of for the second episode of Darkness Calls. Here I am in our first location, my favorite pizza joint in downtown Los Angeles. When you're on a budget, some people suggest going far away uh, to locations, and some suggest staying local. I think you should do both if it helps save you money. I don't care which. This pizza place is literally a block away, and since I was on my own, it made the whole process way easier. My general philosophy about filmmaking on YouTube is to make it as high quality as I possibly can. I think that means taking my time and finding actual locations if I can. I want to add value to my audience's viewing experiences, and making films look as good as possible, I think, helps. A brief talk about gear. The whole episode was shot on two cameras, the Sony FS7 and the Blackmagic production camera. Only three lenses were used, the Nikon 28-70 a meta, with a Metabone speed booster, a Vivitar 105mm 1-to-1 macro, and a mere 47H 20mm a Soviet lens for all the driving shots. The map. Part of what makes this episode cool is the map. I've always been a big fan of maps and Indiana Jones travel sequences, so I thought I'd do my own version of it here with real maps. <laughs> I used strain to delineate between regions, giving the map a three-dimensional effect. I think it's really cool. The floating map is a very simple visual effect. I taped the map to a C-stand and created a mat to delete the background. I think it really works. I've added an extra shot to get a little more perspective here. Style. I was consciously thinking of 1970s films when making this piece, specifically Duel, Sorcerer, and anything with long zooms. Now, since I had a still lens zoom and not a cinema zoom, I had to cheat to create these long, smooth zooms. Since I had a camera like the FS7 that can shoot really high frame rates, and I didn't have a cine zoom to create perfectly smooth shots, I had to shoot all these smooth zoom shots at 180 frames per second while zooming out on the lens. Don't ask me why it was smoother than zooming in, it just was. And then I reversed the shot in post. That way I got a beautiful, creepy, gradual zoom into the subject. This shot here saved me from having to shoot an extra 10 to 20 shots. A simple transition and graphical match can take you places way faster and more efficiently than a dozen or more shots detailing each and every step of the way. Part of filmmaking is condensing information, and I stumbled upon this on my first date due to lack of time and resources to shoot everything I wanted. As for shooting car stuff, let me tell you about it in my own voice of myself talking to you on video. We are... Prepping for the next uh, Darkness Calls, we've got something really cool here today. It's a car mount. We are going to be mounting this car mount to my car and going out to Vasquez Rocks, which is a very uh, famous uh, location. I think Star Trek's been shot there, a bunch of other films. It looks very alien-like. Now, I had never used one of these, and I would have preferred to have a professional grip on hand to do this for me. But when you don't have all the money in the world, you make do. And we did, except for one problem, which I'll get to. You see those funny stripes on the monitor? That'll come back to haunt me. Uh, all right, so supposedly this thing is going to maintain uh, suction to my car. Seems pretty goddamn stable. Ugh. Maybe not. We have some ratchet straps. We're going to be nailing this thing down to the hood of the car as tightly as possible. I don't really trust the suction cups, but I guess nobody should. So after a 12 hour day of shooting in this pizza joint and then out in the desert with this amazing Carmel camera that we had, uh, I realized that I had screwed up all the footage for the car mount stuff out in the desert. The camera sends a signal to the recorder uh, 
that sometimes contains frame lines and other information like zebra patterns, and I thought that that was from the reference monitor. Well, as it turns out, it was from the camera, and all the footage contains all this gobbledygook all over the frame, like zebra patterns and stupid frame lines, and now all this driving footage that uh, I was so excited about is now no, no better than temp. So I'll be able to edit the piece with temp footage, but I gotta go back out to the desert and shoot the goddamn footage again. So check the source, always check the source. Lesson learned, I'll never do it again. So I did have to do it again, this time without Mark, my writing partner, to help out. Here's a comparison of the footage we shot with the zebra patterns and the good footage. Fun fact, this tunnel is used in Steven Spielberg's first film, Duel. I highly recommend it. There's nothing like a simple screw-up to humble you. The house. One of the biggest questions I get from friends and colleagues is about this creepy and bizarre A-frame in the middle of the desert. Usually you see A-frames in the woods. People want to know where we shot it, was it scary, and how far away was it? Well, it was in the middle of the desert, and yes, it was scary, and it was really far away. Finding locations like this near Los Angeles that weren't filled with people you'd be disturbing is hard to find in my experience. So I looked at locations within two hours by car. Mark and I were alone when we got there. The wind was blowing, it was dry, there was nobody around. It was creepy. The only company we eventually ended up having were two extremely angry guard dogs that were thankfully kept away from us by a fence. I've rarely experienced a place that was so isolated. The lack of people and the dry wind and the dogs made it for a frightening experience. I still imagine that there were people inside, staring at us, waiting around the back in the darkness, waiting for us to come back there. But nothing happened. Our total filming time there was under 15 minutes. Thank you. Goodness. I mean, look at that. Look how fucking scary that looks. So you guys need to let me know. Do you like these little things of me talking about how to make these episodes or how uh, or what it was like making them? I know that they're a bit different than a lot of other YouTube episodes considering the uh, sort of effort that goes into making them. You know, Please let us know in the comments if you want to see more of these kinds of videos. I think they're interesting. I always used to love watching them on the DVDs that I bought, the making of, the commentary. And so I always think that my audience might want to hear something like this as well. Let me know what else you'd like to see us make. I'd really like to know. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave comments below. You can find us on Twitter at A-D-I-S-S-I-G. Or you can find us at Instagram at distant underscore signal. And you can also find us on Facebook. So feel free to reach out. Let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.